God say go ahead and put it in God's hands God you are able God this is not too hard for you it's not too big for you Lord this is something that Lord you can handle do it again God do it again Lord God you've healed other people with this same affliction God do it again God you've opened up doors before Lord do it again
so thankful for everybody that is here uh tonight uh this is uh this is uh this is part of our core uh you guys are people making things happen so many of you guys work in various capacities in the back sound ushers and uh, we're so thankful for you john chapter 7 i'm going to take your attention to verse 37 i'm going to take your attention to verse 37 i love to hear bible flipping amen amen i was with the young people this this friday and uh, I told them to take their Bibles out, and everybody pulled out a phone. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. But we praise God for it. How many of you guys are excited for what God on, has on our lives, our young people? Amen. Amen. A lot of preliminaries tonight, but thankful for them. Amen. All right, John chapter 7, verse 37. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait. All right. You got 15 more seconds, and we're moving on. Amen. I'm going to read out of the King James. The Bible says, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Everybody say, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Amen. I want to talk about rivers of the spirit, rivers of the spirit. If you can close your Bibles, we're going to pray. We've already prayed, but I feel like God is going to speak to us. Let's just ask the Lord to help us. I'm going to set this mic down and just give you an opportunity. Ask the word just to get into the soil of your heart. Can you lift your hands and lift your voice and pray just for a moment? God, we want you to speak to us. We want you to have your way in us. We want your word to have free reign, free course. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're going to do and what you're going to say. Oh, God, we love you today because your spirit is going to speak to us. Your spirit is going to help us. Your spirit is going to grow us. And we give you honor today. We love you today. We lift you up today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus name. You may be seated in Jesus name. I'm probably going to do not as much as not as much preaching as I would normally do on a Sunday night. But bear with me as we kind of walk through this. Uh, in the next few moments here, I kind of want to emphasize uh, a specific point, uh, And I hope the Lord will kind of help me to elaborate on that. But uh, I'm going to start, although we read from John, I'm really going to kind of take some emphasis in Genesis. And I, and I find myself coming here a lot is because uh, essentially I enjoy blueprints. Uh, I don't want to do things by accident, but I want to be intentional uh, with my life. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I think I think about I think about eternity uh, often. Uh, I think about eternity often. I think about the passing of life often. Uh, it's 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 not that uh, I'm nihilistic in my thinking. Uh, at times, it can render itself to be such, but uh, I'm just, uh, it's just the way I am. I'm just kind of thinking and just kind of seeing where things are going, and and if you pay attention long enough, it'll just kind of lead you towards eternity, and so that being said, uh, my heart uh, is to not waste time. I don't want to waste time. 
because we only have a certain amount of time before this thing is over and this thing is done with. And whether it be because the Lord has come or he has decided to call us up, uh, our time is limited. And so that being said, it's imperative that we spend our time in the right places. And so Genesis, uh, for some reason or another, just carries out the blueprints that we need so that our lives are not wasted and our lives aren't given to futility. In Genesis chapter 1 in particular, I want to look at something that I think is important to us. And uh, I'm going to use Genesis chapter 1 as a framework, and then we're going to come back to John chapter 7. But in Genesis chapter 1, this is the creation of man, how God designs and orchestrates man. He begins to frame man, and you understand this, after he's already established all the other living things. So the fowl of the air, the birds of the sea, um, he begins to establish those things that were in the waters. He establishes cattle, everything that creepeth on the ground. But by the time we get to the fulfillment of Genesis chapter 1, we see that God establishes a garden. And in that garden is where he would place man. But to nurture and to feed that garden, there had to have been something that was there. And there's two specific rivers that the Bible talks about. And there's the rivers of Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. And these both of these rivers would feed and nourish the garden of Genesis. And it would be in this garden that God would place Adam. And it would be here that Adam would be called to live in, to spend time in, to cultivate the will of God, to dominate as God had called him. And uh, the reason why I want to focus here is because there's some things that maybe we have to give some consideration to in our own journey. That before God places us in something or before God send us somewhere, that God always makes sure that there is provision vision for the time that we get there, that he doesn't call us to places that he won't nourish us, that he won't provide for us, that he won't give to us. And it is here that we see that Adam is not placed in a barren garden, that Adam is not placed in a dry garden, that Adam is not placed in a fruitless garden, but Adam is placed in a prepared garden. And what I suggest to you is this, is that God sometimes will delay what belongs to us because we have not prepared for it. There are things that belong to us. There are things that God wants to do in us. There are things that God has spoken to us, but God cannot give those things to us because we are not prepared for it. Before he put man in his place, he had to make sure that place was properly furnished. He had to make sure that they had food to eat. He had to make sure that they had shade to sleep under. He had to make sure that they had a place to commune with him. He had to make sure that all these things were right. Now, this isn't only seen in Genesis chapter 1, but you see this in the building or the orchestrating of the tabernacle and the temple of God, that before the glory of God descended in the temple, he waited till the temple was fully furnished, till the temple was fully built, and it was at that moment that the Bible says that the glory of God descended on the temple, and in that place, the glory filled the temple, such so that the priest could not operate in the capacity that they thought that they would be operating under because the glory was so full. What am I trying to pull out of there? That before God, before God sends us his glory, before God sends us his people, before God sends us his promise, he always prepares the place. And if there's anything you get out of tonight's message, here's what I want you to get. That God is not going to haphazardly give you what he said he would give you, but he's only going to give to us what we've prepared for. Amen. And so in 2024, in the month of February, I just want to ask you, what exactly are you preparing for? What exactly have you positioned yourself for? What exactly have you placed in the right place and things that you've established and set in order to make sure that God sees we are prepared for what he wants to give us? Here it is in Genesis chapter 1, that before God sends the man, God prepares the place. Before God sends the man, God prepares the place. I know we're expecting God to pour out a supernatural revival that makes no sense to us. But can I just help us understand some things? Just because it's supernatural to us does not mean it's supernatural to God. Can I, can I just help you there? 
that, 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 that we think just because it makes no sense to us, we can think that God is arbitrary in nature, that he moves without consistency, that he has no patterns, and that is not God. Your God is consistent. Your God is scientific. He has methods and standards that he follows. He has laws that he gives. He's not going to break his pattern. And here it is. At times, because revival and harvest and growth can seem supernatural to us, we then think it happens magically. There's no explanation to it. It just occurred. But just because you don't understand, that doesn't mean God doesn't understand. This is just about with every supernatural principle. And I air quote supernatural because I think we misunderstand what supernatural is. Best way I can explain to you is this, is if you have a three-year-old and that three-year-old is outside with you and they see some big thing that looks like a bird but far out flying in the sky and they ask you to say, hey, what's that? You say, that's an airplane. And then they look at you and they say, well, how does that work? Well, you understand that you can't explain to the th- to that three-year-old, uh, you know, gravity and aerodynamics. You can't, you can't go through the history of aviation. So you just say, well, it's kind, it's kind of like a car, but it flies. <laughs> and whether you acknowledge it or not, that kid thinks, wow, that's magical. <laughs> but you and your mature thinking understand, no, that's scientific. You can't explain to the child how it works, but that doesn't mean there's not a reason behind how it works. And I feel like in 2024, we need to pull out the mysticism that we've added to Pentecost. There's some things that make sense beyond our reason, but it still makes sense. Amen. Amen. I don't know why when you pray, God responds, but I know he doesn't do it by accident. He has a pattern that he follows. I can't explain to you why when you go down in Jesus' name, how your sins are washed away, but he still has a pattern. I can't tell you why when you show up, you feel better, so much better since you laid your burdens down. All I know is that it works. So at times, we can assume that God doesn't have a blueprint, but I believe Genesis helps us to reason in our limited understanding in how God works. The first thing that I want you to understand, that before God sends a man, God makes sure that there's fruit in that place. Can I say it this way? God's not sending people where there's no fruit. This is okay. Can I tell you, God's not sending people where there's nothing to nourish them spiritually. Can I tell you, it's not the will of God that we birth people in the kingdom, but they starve because there's no fruit amongst us. But it's the will of God that when they get into this place, they can find love, joy, peace, righteousness, self-control. Can I tell you, there ought to be fruit amongst us that when people show up, they have something to nourish their soul and nourish their spirit there ought to be fruit can I tell you beyond that God made sure that his presence was there because God's not going to send a man where his presence is and in 2024 if we're going to seek after anything we need to seek after the presence of God I, 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 I think we, we, we got to be careful that we don't engage in spiritual activity Without understanding why we're doing it. We, we, we don't just work. Can I listen? Can I just say this? Is this okay? Can I say this is okay? Church altar calls matter. Can I just say this? Can I just I listen? I love you guys. You guys, you guys know I love you guys. But but altar calls matter. And 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 and, and we don't just have altar calls because that's just the protocol every Sunday morning. Or that's just the protocol every Sunday night. But whether you realize it or not, somebody that Saturday was high out of their mind, drunk beyond recognition, and they somehow stumbled into the house of God. And there better be enough of the presence of God 
taking place during an altar call service that when they come to the front, the Spirit of God can sober them up and deliver them and set them free. We're not just doing it to pass on time, but the presence of God needs to be involved. Amen. Can I say it this way? You don't always got to feel like you need prayer to come to the front during altar call. And, 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 and I don't know how else to do, but just be transparent. Eight out of ten times, I don't want to come to the altar and pray. I don't want to talk to God about my humanity and my flesh. We've been dealing with that all week. Times you come down to the altar, you're frustrated. I've prayed about that before. But you have to put your reasoning aside. Because can I put it this way? This garden is not about you. This garden is about who God is sending in here. And there are moments where you come down to the front and pray. Not for you. But for them. Amen. 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 Moments when we're engaging in spiritual activity. it's, It's so crucial. Everybody say it's important. Everybody say it's important. Everybody say it's important. I I, I, I want to help you because I know we don't do it with ill intent. But can I tell you sometimes what I see standing up here? There are times where I will see a guest or a visitor or a backslider or a saint that you think is okay. Sitting in their pew. Wanting to come to the front during an altar call service. And the first thing they do is this. They want to know, is anyone else moving? They want to know, does anybody else need something? Because I know I do. And when we don't move, they don't move. Can I grow us up just a little bit in 2024? Sunday morning altar calls are not for you. They're for who God is sending to us. They belong to the people that God is bringing to this garden. If you don't come up and do anything else, just come up here and close your eyes just for a little bit. Your presence just bringing, being down here means so much. When you just walk down that aisle and lift your hands, you think nobody's looking. But that person on the back of that pew is saying, because he went up, I'll go up. It matters, it matters, it matters, it matters. I know, I know I'm stepping in some stuff, but I just need to say it because it, I, I can tell you, and, and, and I, your pastor loves you, your pastor loves you. So I'm going to say it for him, but there are times where I could feel his heart because he's preaching to that sinner. But when the saints don't move, I, I, listen, we're, we're a great church. We do great things and we're doing amazing things. But I just want to help us just to do a little bit better. The next time you are asked to come down to the altar on a Sunday morning, don't come down for you. Come down for the person that God has sent into this garden. Amen. Can everybody just say amen? Amen. I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just burdened. I'm not mad. I'm just burdened. Oh, I'm just burdened. It can't happen. It can't happen because you run and go find guests at the end of the service and you could smell the alcohol on their breath. Praise God. They wanted to come down, but they just didn't know how to. How many of you guys remember your first time in a Pentecostal service? Be honest. Some of you, we've been saved so long. We don't know how intimidating it is. You, 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 we, 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 we don't know. We don't know how intimate we look at everybody. And, and I remember sitting in a Bible study just a few weeks ago and, 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 and Fair and I were sitting there talking and they made a comment that, that, that just struck me and I had to clear it so quickly. They said, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Just sometimes I show up and, and I'm like, man, I look like a bum. And, and, and I just, you know, everybody there just looks so perfect. But what are they supposed to think when every single time the preacher says, if you have a need, come to the altar and pray and nobody comes. (laughs) Guess what they think? We're all perfect. (laughs) It speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. I put it this way. We need your prayers. We need your prayers. There, there's, listen, and can I, can I say it this way? I know we're practical tonight. Can I say it this way? When people are down here praying, just because you're not the one grabbing the bottle of oil, that doesn't mean you can't come lay a shoulder, hand on somebody's shoulder. We, we, we need your 
prayers. We are not here to do the work of ministry. We're here to equip you to do the work of ministry. You're needed. I don't care if you feel like a preacher. You don't understand. I, I did that last week and I, I don't care. You're here and we need you. I move on. In that garden, God made sure. That there were rivers. Everybody say rivers. Everybody say rivers. Oh, oh, God, God will never send a man somewhere where he doesn't provide water. He made sure there were rivers because he knew he put it in them. He knew that they have to be able to drink. They, their, their, their soul, their humanity can only go so long without drinking from that water, without having their body, their cells hydrated. And can I tell you, God will never send a man where there's no rivers. There needs to be rivers. Everybody say rivers that flow out of the Pentecostal of the land. There, there needs to be rivers that flow we don't need dry dull prayer meetings this this isn't me being hard i just but i love you and, and i just i i didn't want to i had great th- i had four other things i was begging god to let me preach i was like this is great maybe i'll get there but he landed me here so here's what we're gonna go but we need rivers in the church of god i didn't say we need more noise i said we need rivers I didn't say we just need more bodies. We need rivers. We need a flow of the Holy Ghost that overtakes people when they walk into the building. If you've never been dry and thirsty before and walked into a service where there was rivers, you won't understand what I'm talking about. But if you've had moments where you feel like, man, I just can't go on. I can't make it. I have nothing to offer. But somebody was praying. Somebody was worshiping. And the rivers of the spirit begin to flow into that sanctuary. It will change you. All of a sudden, your attitude is better. Your heart just feels better. Your mind just feels like there's less pressure. Your spirit feels like it's been unburdened. Why? Because there's rivers. And there shouldn't just be enough rivers for us, but there should be enough rivers for this city to swim in. Are you hearing me? There, there, there needs to be enough rivers of the Holy Ghost. And so can I come here? Listen, pre-service prayer is important. And, and, and I'm going to say, listen, I'll say it. Um, um, you know, pre-service prayer hasn't been that great for a while. You know, it has its ups and downs. And, and some, of that, some of that's not us. Be very clear. You think the devil likes what we're doing? You know, you, you know. You know, life would be a lot easier if we just had, like, just casual church. The devil would have fight us. We would have a great time. Sip some coffee. Hang out. Jesus is cool. I'm cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the case. Unfortunately, we are involved in a battle over the souls of men. And the enemy doesn't like it when we determine in our hearts that we're going to pray. The enemy doesn't like it when we determine in our hearts, not only are we going to show up, but we're going to show up and we're going to dig and we're going to dig and we're going to dig until the rivers of the spirit begin to flow. Can I tell you, we can't have dry altar calls amongst us. It can't just be the select few that come down to the altar and help us pray or come down to pre-service prayer and help us pray. But I want you, I want you to take your attention back to John chapter 7. John chapter 7 verse 37 says something that's interesting. In John chapter 7 verse 37, here's how he puts it. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And here's what he said. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of drinking water, of living water. Here's what I think is interesting here. In verse 37, he says, if you thirst, come unto me and drink. 
But in verse 38, he says, if you believe, you'll be rivers of living water. The first aspect of this promise is that you'll be a partaker. But the second aspect of this promise is that you'll be a distributor. In John chapter 7, verse 37, he, it's all about you. If you're, if you're thirsty, you come and drink. But in verse 38, it's not about you being thirsty. It's about you believing so others can drink. And can I tell you what God wants to do? God wants to do the second half of this miracle in us. Where we don't just know how to show up and drink. Where we know how to show up and have a move of God. But we need to get a part of the second aspect of this. That I don't just know how to drink of the rivers of the Spirit. I know how to produce the rivers of the Spirit. That when church feels like it's locked up, I know how to lift my hands and get a hold of heaven. Till the Spirit begins to flow out of me. When it feels tight and it feels like we're not going anywhere. I don't criticize the music and the preaching. But I know how to let the rivers of the Spirit If we're going to get where we need to go, God needs to make rivers in this place. People that just know how to let the river of the spirit begin to flow. You know, you know, you know what I want you to understand? It is not the will of God that you have to be reliant on somebody else's source. But I believe in God to give us rivers because before God sends the man, he needs to know that there's drinking water in the place. He needs to know that it's not just stagnant, polluted water, but that there are rivers of the spirit that people can drink. You know, you know, the powerful thing about a river is that it has a force. If a river's strong enough, it'll move things out the way. You know, if there's a river flowing in your innermost being, offense can't stay in your heart. Bitterness can't stay in your soul. Envy and, and, and frustration. You know, you know, being easily offended isn't an option when you have a river. You know why? why? Because if you throw something into a river and that river is strong enough, if you've ever seen a really strong current, if that river is strong enough, it'll just move things along the way. And you know why things that are so small settle in us way too long, stay in us way too long? Because there's not a strong enough river carrying out of us frustration and bitterness and envy. You know when you have a river, we get along better when there's rivers. ever been swimming you go into water sometimes you don't see the same way that you see when you come above water it adjusts your perspective whenever you jump in a river beyond that there is life in a river can i tell you god wants us to be life givers he wants our beings to be life when people get in contact with us they don't die can I put it this way? If you're having conversations with people and they leave less spiritual, not more spiritual, you need a river. If, if, if every relationship that you engage in with your kids and with your parents and with your friends seem to deteriorate, not grow spiritually, you need a river. If your mental state is declining year over year in terms of the bitterness that's in there, the pollution that's in there, the nonsense that's in there, you need a river to move that stuff out. If you can't forgive quickly, if you still remember the saint that took your seat from three years ago, So-and-so didn't shake my hand. Can I say this? You need a river. You need a big river to push that mess out of you. If we're a church that's easily offended because they didn't do something for me, you need a river. If every sermon has to do with you and nobody else, you need a river. Because a river will just push some things out. I don't understand this. I don't know how this works. I'm not into this type of stuff. 
But I do know people who enjoy hunting. They just know things about animals. One thing that they understand about animals is that animals just know how to find water. Nobody, I mean, they don't ask Siri. There's no GPS. You don't go to the woods and find like a navigational, like just a big map. You know, Mr. Doe, I'm sorry, Mr. Deer and Mrs. Doe walk up and they're just reading it. We just go a little straight, turn left. That's how guys give directions. I just nod my head. You know, something about them is just instinctual. They just know how to find water. And can I tell you, it's the same thing with souls. You know, sinners were running to find Jesus. Because something in them just knew. He has water. They, they were running to the desert to find John the Baptist. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible never records a miracle that John performs. But John had a connection. What was that connection? He was the one who was preparing the way of the Lord. He was making room for the river. And they went to the desert. And can I just say this? I I know that people have 10,000 excuses on why things can't happen in Deland or Volusia County. Well, we're not them and we don't have their resources. If you just make way for the rivers, the right people will find you. We, we, and I'm just going to say, we're not waiting for some random person to write us a check so we can get into a building. God will send us the right people. Praise God. If you have rivers, the people will come. You just got to make sure the river's flowing. The river needs to be flowing in your home. Demons, demons don't like being next to rivers. Look at what happened with Pharaoh. The second, second he got in water, what happened? He was drowned in the water. Demons got in swine. They ran to that water and they drowned. Because they don't like water. Whenever you get rivers into the conversation. If there's a river of the Holy Ghost. We can plan. And I believe in planning. We can prepare and I believe in preparing. But if there is no rivers. That are flowing. I want to tell you tonight, you need to guard your river. You need, you need to watch how hell is trying to block up and pollute your river. You know, you know, we engage in spiritual warfare way more often when we realize. When you're just getting frustrated, you just think it's just you getting frustrated. That's just hell trying to block up your river. When you're just getting offended, there are just some things that aren't worth my river being stopped. It's just not worth it. Because if we have a river, our youth group will have something to drink from. Our Sunday school will have something to drink from. I want us all to stand. I hope you haven't given up on Volusia County yet. I hope you don't think it's just us two and no more. I hope you don't think that we're just talking about something we're not really expecting. Because God has great things that he wants to do here. It's it's your purpose. I know I know I know you might think your purpose is in some social setting politically, you know, economically relationally that's that's not your purpose your purpose is this mission field but if god is going to do what he wants to do we got to make sure that the rivers are flowing every department needs rivers that are flowing every usher needs a river every sound person needs a river every worship leads a river we we need this place to be saturated with the holy ghost we need rivers that are so strong that when I leave an altar call, I forget why I was mad at you. I just, I just, I know I was mad at you. You did something, but I just, I just forgot. We need a river church. I'm, 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 I'm asking you that we make sure that during pre-service prayer and altar calls that our rivers are flowing. 
And if it's not, just dig in just a little bit deeper. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to have a time of prayer. And there's some of us, we need, to, we need to address some things that are stopping up our river. You know what will stop up your river so quickly? Cares and concerns. It's bogged down with pressure. You ever show up to pray? And the second you start just honoring God and stop venting about your frustrations, the rivers just begin to flow. The presence of God steps in. Old song used to say, there is a river. Can I tell you, there's a river here. There's a river here. I want us to find somebody and why don't you come down to the altar here. We're going to pray here for a few minutes. I want you to know what you're looking for is in that river. I don't know if Sister Holly's here. She can help me. And we're going to pray. Uh, but there's some of us while we're praying, we got some forgiving we need to do. We got some repenting that we need to do. You know what I want for the Pentecostals of the land? I, I want I want for the Pentecostals of the land that the greatest moves of God that we had before 2023, before 2024, we're able to experience in our living rooms. I want God to do something in our homes. I want God to do something in our minds and in our lives. I don't just want us to participate in church. I want the river of the Holy Ghost to begin to wash things, to begin to move things. And that might mean that we have to spend some more time in prayer. We have to let some things go. We got to spend some more time in fasting. But church, we can't lose our river. You don't even got to lift your hands. But if you'd like to, if you feel to, you can. You could kneel. You could do whatever you want. But I just want you to close your eyes. Can we just do some repenting for maybe taking our river for granted? For letting things pollute our river that didn't need to or shouldn't have. Right where you are, I just want you to close your eyes. But the Holy Ghost needs to unstop some things, unplug some things that have been in our minds. There's some of us before we leave this place, we need to go find a brother or a sister that we've been upset with, that we've been frustrated with, and we need to ask for their forgiveness. There's been some of us, we've had attitudes that have not been appropriate for a Christian who has a river. And we got some, we got some forgiving to do. We got some repenting to do. For some of us, we just need to ask God, 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 I just need you to let that river flow again. I need you to let it flow over this depression I've been fighting, this doubt I've been fighting, this unbelief I've been fighting. God, I need you to let that river flow, God, till I feel the saturation of your spirit. Some of us, we don't know the last time that we've just laid before the Lord and the tears begin to flow and we worshiped him in spirit and in truth. Come on, we want to win souls in 2024, but we're not going to abandon the reality that God has called us to be worshipers, to worship him in spirit and in truth. We want the river of the Holy Ghost. We want the river of the Holy Ghost. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're asking God that you would cleanse us, that you would wash us, that you would move on our hearts and minds, oh God. God, we want to reprioritize your presence in our lives. We want to reprioritize your spirit in our lives, oh God. We want to reprioritize who you are to us. God, we've let bitterness dictate our decisions. We've let carnality dictate our spiritual disciplines. God, we've strayed away from prayer, Father, and tonight we want to come back to that river of the spirit till you can flow over us oh god god we want that river to flow in our living room and in our homes god over our children god in our marriage god god we want you to dust off god the lethargy that's been over our spirituality as of late the complacency that we've gotten into father 
We've let things creep back into our house that we threw out a while ago. God, movies and music, God, that we stopped listening to a little bit ago, God, they've been creeping back in, God. Disciplines that we've had for a long time, we've let go of, Father. Our attitudes hasn't been where it needs to be, God. We've had a sharp tongue, God, and a heavy hand, God. We're asking, God, that the river of the Spirit would begin to flow and wash us, God. God, we need it to wash our eyes and our minds, the way we've been thinking, the way we've been talking, oh God. Oh God, it's not your will that we live in the filth of our own carnality, Jesus. But today, God, we need to do a little bit of repenting, Father. God, maybe we've just been steeped in religion, but we've lost our connection to you, God. We've lost that flow of the Spirit that we had in worship, God. We've lost the connection that we had with you, Jesus. God, we're asking, God, that you would begin to unplug that river of the Spirit, God. God, if it's forgiveness that we need to act, God, I pray that you'd help us to do it. If it's repenting that we need to do, I pray you'd help us do it. But God, we don't want anything to get in the way of the river of the Spirit in our lives. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus.